Free men need to be able to protect their families. It's really sad to see people hurt, livelihoods destroyed, even homes destroyed, just to make a political point. Free men take action when churches face heartbreaking attacks. And while cowards stand idle, free men run towards the sound of gunshots when children are in danger. I'm so thankful for free men who stand ready with the tools of liberty. Home, it's where you build your legacy, where traditions are started, seeds are planted, meals are shared, and stories are told. We are Chris and Natalie Carpenter, owners of Story Real Estate, and our team of top agents helps people find homes in Moscow, Idaho, and around the country. Have you thought about a move? Contact us to get connected with a top agent who shares your values and puts your family first. Or reach out to us about our Moscow Relocation Guide. Wherever you're looking to go, we can help you find home. Call us at Story Real Estate or visit us at storyrealestate.com and start building your legacy. What you looking around for? Like, <laughs> you expect somebody else to come <laughs> in? Or? I wasn't sure. <laughs> Hey, welcome to Cross Politics. Gabe's not here today, so once again, you're stuck with me, I think, for the rest of the week. And oh. you're stuck with this guy over here, too, Keith Darrell, Pastor Toby. Thank hey. you for watching. You know, it's not too late to make a New Year's resolution for 2023. I'm going to be saying this probably all year long. <laughs> this year, resolve to support hard-hitting, truth-telling, culture-shaping publications and subscribe to the Fight, Laugh, Feast magazine. Join our fight against evil culture through print media by getting a subscription to the Fight, Laugh, Feast magazine. The Fight, Laugh, Feast magazine is our rowdy Christian mojo incarnated into print media. While tech giants try to shut down our avenues to deliver the truth to you, we, along with the United States Postal Service, are the underground resistance, delivering theologically driven cultural commentary from faithful and heavy hitting authors right to your door. Psalms to sing, recipes for feasting, humor to encourage belly laughs, serrated theological essays, all to the glory of God. Sign up your church, your grumpy uncle, the Pope, Elon Musk, all your kids and grandkids, even if they're not baptized. Thanks. Platinum Club members, you get magazine subscriptions for free because we love you. We're so thankful for your support. And if you're not a club member yet, hey, sign up today. Four issues are only $60 per year. Go to fightlaughfeast.com right now and subscribe today. The next issue is actually the the um, the theme is Damn Darwin. You said you were working on that. And uh, and yeah, actually this morning, early, I got up, I, I, was, I just woke up and it was like, bing, and it was going to write. And I, and I wrote my I wrote my article, at least 90% of it, 95% of it. So you're going to give us just a little taste. And uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm talking about why... Um, why we're doing the politics of six day creation for our, our um, uh, fight, laugh, feast conference yeah, that's at right. the Ark encounter. Um, I'm so which excited about registration. It should be open any day. Like that. Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, technically uh, open, but they're still doing some changes and fixes to it okay, from what I heard from okay. Gabe. I was, I mean, Gabe sent us a little preview thing on, uh, it was last Friday or something. Yep. And, uh, and then I haven't seen the actual, you know, splash yet. Yeah. But, um, but basically, you know, why um, uh, reading Genesis one and two, as as God breathed history mm. impacts politics, the public square, um, and uh, and why uh, it's uh, very very good and Christian uh, to say things like "damn Darwin," mm. because I mean that's it's it's a it's a you know Paul said if anyone preaches another gospel, let him be accursed, let mm. him be damned. Do you have a Baptist version of it, like "darn Dar Darwin" or something? Like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad gummit Darwin. Yeah, there we Dad go. Dad gum. Yeah. Darwin. Darwin. Yeah, yeah no, go. we're not doing that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm. <laughs> Sorry. I tried. I tried. Don't get mad no. at me. No. Yeah. Subscribe um, so you can get the article. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. You know what else affects politics? Fathers. Mm. And I don't normally give titles to show, but this like, show is- Like forefathers and founding fathers. And just fathers. And dads. And dads. And granddads. Men, yeah, they have an effect. Yeah. Uh, th there was a saying where, I, Keith, if I said, dad, you got one job, well, how do you finish the sentence? Uh, <laughs> now, <Yeah>. Keith, 
<laughs> you have some hood bona fides, and I think you just lost it. Uh-oh. I don't know what is you it. You forgot? I forgot. Well, You've you been out the hood show? too long. There, there's, so there was there's a there's a growing line. up in Reindeer Heights. I was on the notice, 8700 block of Reindeer Heights. No, okay. so, notice, no Snox didn't ask me. Okay, so pastor, yeah, no. if I said, <laughs> no, don't no, ask okay. me. I don't know why you're. Oh, okay, I thought you were jealous. No, I'm, I no, I'm like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. So, I'm gonna be disappointed when I hear the answer. You are because you go, you know it. I know you know it, Dad. You got one job: keep your daughter off the pole. <laughs> right? I, that's not. That's, <laughs> that, that's no, you know, you no, know, no, no, no. People that's don't say not, that. That's, that's, not, not, no, the, that's not the one job I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I got a higher bar growing up on the 8700 yeah. block of Blitzen no, and Reindeer yeah. Heights. That, Our that, bar was a little higher than like, to keep the girls off the pole. It's kind of like a, a game. What moment. happened? No, this is, well, game's not. <laughs> Hey, hey, what happened? That's exactly right. That's actually my point because that was the thing. Like, um, I remember uh, Mo- not Morris Chestnut. What's his name? The guy in the Matrix. Um, uh, the the uh, not not Neo. The, I, I've you know? actually never seen the movie. Uh, uh, Morpheus. Yeah, Morpheus. I know Morpheus. His daughter started doing porn, mm. and I remember you know Ice Cube. He brought it back up. He brought it back around. And he was like, "Dad, you got one job, and it's to keep your daughter off the pole." I think that's actually wrong. I think good. I think that's yeah. good. Good. No, no, no. Good. We're getting biblical. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but everybody knows. Everybody knows it's like that's the real. Like that's part of because fatherhood has sank so far that the only thing that, that dads had left was like, okay, listen, if you got no, if you could do nothing else, <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you could do nothing else, don't let her be a, you know on a pole. Don't let her be something that is a pariah. That's okay. completely changed now. <laughs> I mean, I mean now it's, it's like it's almost an empowerment if you put her on the pole. It's I, empowerment. I know, which is that says something else. I think, though, that fathers actually have two jobs. Men, fathers have two jobs. Yeah, only? Uh, yeah. Only two? Yeah, only two. All right. Love God, love your neighbor? That's it. Yes. Oh! Yes. That's, that's the part of hood you were from. You got that part. He's yeah. from the Christian yeah. hood. <laughs> I, I, and out from that flows uh, a lot of different things that are connected directly to those two. Mm-hmm. But it's loving God, right? Mm-hmm. Having the standard rightly ordered loves towards God. And then... Um, how you inter- engage with everybody who's your neighbor. We forget sometimes our closest neighbor are our wife mm-hmm. and our children. That's right? right. And the reason that I know that men aren't doing their jobs Uh-oh. with a Z, I said it like that, uh-huh. is because of stuff like this. For nearly 50 years, Americans relied on the rights that Roe protected. Today, however, on what would have been its 50th anniversary, we speak of the Roe decision in the past tense. Because last June, the United States Supreme Court took away that constitutional right, a fundamental right, a basic freedom from the people of America, from the women of America. The court's action has meant already, that many dedicated doctors and nurses now lose their ability to care for their patients, that providers risk going to jail just for doing their job, and that patients are denied critical care and even fear that they will be punished simply for seeking care. Knox, you have one job around here. <laughs> and your job is to keep Kamala Harris off that screen. <laughs> I fell at that quite often. I'm, I will repent of that. I just, for, I do want to first say, I want to thank Kamala for bringing up the whole Roe v. Wade thing again. I just needed a reason to play this clip. The Wicked Witch. I love this song. I've been waiting for a reason to play that clip, and so that's the only reason that Kamala really. No, I'm grateful. You know, one of the things that we, when we deal with um, the issue of abortion, we deal with, um, you know, uh, Roe v. Wade. One of the things we forget is the impact that fathers have on daughters, and the and, and the impact that parenting has on children. But particularly with her, Kamala, is a woman who hasn't been loved well by her father. Right. And the fact that she's acting like this, and, and there's a lot of women who are out there who are buying into this worldview because dads didn't love their daughters well. Mm-hmm. And, and it was one thing to throw it at the feet of women. I think that's, that's, there's the responsible, but dad, yeah. 
Like you got to look at yourself and be like, what did I do? Mm. (laughs) That my daughter would sit here and want to kill my grandchild. Right. Well, and then every, you know, I mean, every pregnancy, there's a dad. Absolutely. You know, and, 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 and dads, where are you when it comes to the baby that you created? That's right. I mean, so there's oh, father the daughter, connection. and then there's there's a father of the baby that's in, in you know inside it's, that woman. Well, and then there's a father to son connection, yep. and we're going to get to that one at the end of this. Okay, but just at this point, yeah. just the way you know, it, it's so funny that just with a father telling his daughter who she is and what she's for, and the beauty of that, and then taking joy in that and glorying in it, he gives her her identity. Right. You know, we're struggling so much with that's, identity. That's what a patriarch would, a patriarchalist oh, would say. Ooh, well, don't, <laughs> yeah. don't let me yeah, hinder that, that's, you. That's what white nationalists would say, uh, like you. you know. Um, <laughs> speaking of identity. Uh. <laughs> no, but, but you're right. You're absolutely right. And, and I mean, basically what we're, we're in the middle of is um, we are reaping um, the fruit of generations of demeaning Come on. the calling of motherhood yeah. S- such that she can get up there and, and, and do her little, you know, I don't know, preacher thing talking about how this is some kind of heinous thing that they can't kill their babies mm-hmm. and that doctors can't kill these babies and that mothers have to have, you know, um, ha- have to be mothers. Um, when it's like, no, you know, life is like hitting the jackpot. Yeah. And motherhood is, I mean, this is the highest calling. I, I think I've told this story on the show before, but it's one of those things that just stuck with Tell me. Tell it again, One, one time. Paul I, does it. I get, ho- I get home from work. I'm sitting in, in the living room. My wife is in the in the, in the the kitchen. And she, you know, she's been there all day long. This is when our kids are little. You know, yeah. she's been just running the home. And she's in there and she's, you know, doing the pots and the pans. And, and there's, you know, there's steam and it's smelling good. And she's making up oh, and, and the phone rings and she, she picks up the phone. She's got it in her, in her shoulder, you know, and I hear, her and she's taking a survey and she's, you know, she's doing a thing and she's doing a survey at the same time. <laughs> and, you know, and there's kids walking in and out and she's giving them instructions. Yeah. Yeah. And she's answering questions. And then she gets to the end. I can tell she get to the end cause it's doing the demographics and whatever. And it was a U of I, uh, survey. She's she's an alumna of of U- University of Idaho, and uh, you know she's you know she's given her age and what year she graduated and everything. And all of a sudden, I hear her say, "Homemaker, mm. homemaker, <laughs> homemaker." AI was broken, wasn't it? And then, and then she says, "I'm a I'm a wife and a mom. I'm a wife and a mom." Yeah. And and I you know I'm and, and I'm like you know kind of chuckling. And, and she gets off the phone. She says, "Poor girl, never heard of a homemaker." <laughs> mm. Mm. And it, like, broke my heart. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, like, what the saddest thing in the world that a young lady has never heard of the highest calling a woman could possibly have, mm. right? What, what, what dad failed her? That's right. To tell her, you know what? When you were a tiny little zygote inside your mother's womb, God already put a uterus inside you. That's right. Come on now. <laughs> like, like, that's how God makes yes. little girls. Yes. Like, he makes them with a little tiny home inside their body mm. so they know what they're for, you know, from, from the beginning. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're, you're someone who makes home. Yeah. You, you, make, you make home inside you because you, you make people inside you, and then you, then you go on and you make home for everyone around you. Yeah. And you, and you just look at the abortion debate and everything else that's going on, like— what has been fundamentally attacked in all of it is the female body. Like these girls, since they're 13 years old, like, hey, be sterile. Yeah. Here's a pill. Take a pop yeah. a pill. Right. Be sterile. The last thing you want right. is to get pregnant. And if you do get pregnant, you can at least kill it. So I just think the whole trajectory right. uh, and like it's not an accident that that's the target. It's no. the same target since no. the guard. Yeah, I was say, oh, there's yeah. nothing new right. on the sun. You think of Pharaoh and his no, men killing killing the yeah. children. What's yeah. surprising is the moms hopping right in on it. Right. But I, I just think that's a yeah, and, you and calling of, that power. Yeah. To and, destroy the glory. Yeah, it's it's just the level of insanity oh. we've reached to destroy the feet. Yeah, and and you see it get teased out practically in trans. Like it's just an absolute assault oh. on the body all around. Oh, and no. and the ones who suffer the most in an immediate way is not going to be men. It's women's because uh. the nature of their body is, as you were saying, to produce life. Yeah. And when you want to stop that from happening, right. like you've got to turn you got to turn it into hell. You got to turn what it means to be a woman into yeah. hell. Is if her body is fundamentally a problem that prevents right. her from getting a job, right. operating the capitalist system, however you want to shake it out. If her body is the problem, then you have to mutilate it or kill the fruit of it. Yeah. And but, so, but, there's, but there's nothing more glorious than, than the image of God. I mean, like to you know, like, like think about it. Like um, a woman 
is the kind of human being that has the power of growing a human being that's inside the most of her. amazing thing right i mean like i mean just stop like you like that's the kind of world we live in yeah like like that's a magical thing yeah and of course you know it's under the blessing of god it's through the union with you and your your husband yeah but like then you have a person growing inside you Right. I mean, like, right. Like, just yeah. stop and think about yeah, that. I can't do that. <laughs> no, I can't do <laughs> it. There's nothing in me that can no, do that. Yeah. No, and 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 all these guys who are you know taking pills and 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 getting you know, you can't do it either. Yeah, they're, and they're convinced uh, scientific men will get us there if we just give us a little more time. Right. That's what they're insane. Yeah, that's, that's, we'll yeah, that, that's our new babble. Uh-huh. That's our new babble. You know, Pastor, you just said something that really made me think, and, and we've said it, but I, it really hit me. Men are to protect glory. That's right. And th- there's a. There's a comedian and he's not all the way right on this, but he says something like, you know, when I had my son, um, I and the doctor put me in his hands. Oh, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to love him like this is my son. This is amazing. And I knew that I was for him. Yeah. He's like, but when the guy gave me my daughter, I knew that I would kill for her. <laughs> for real. You know, and when he right. said that and he's he's missing right. and he doesn't. He's, right. But yeah. he's absolutely right. right. Yeah. You know, and there's yeah. a, something special about yeah. her. And there's a. Your boy, and you t- and you tell your boy, you yeah. see her? Yeah, yeah, right. You, t- you touch her? You, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and you do, but you know, you're right though. You yeah. touch her and anything that's like her, yeah, right? Yeah. Anything that's like her, your yeah. mama, any other yeah. woman, you disrespect them yeah. and you will have Bill, to deal with Bill me. Bill Cosby, you know, he used to say, I brought you into this world. Uh-huh. I'll, I'll take, take you out. out. <laughs> yes, <good>. Take you <laughs> out. But, but, you know, back, you know, in back in the day, and I think this is something that, I mean, Christians, we, we need, we need to recover is it, it was, it was common. It was practice. A woman walked in the room, and the we men all—all all the I men stood that. up. I remember that. Right? What has you just remember and, that? Oh yeah. Uh, oh and, yeah. And, and, it was a southern. Th- it was, well, uh, I was young, but the, a lot of the South maintained still, a lot of those things. And, you know, and growing up, and some of us haltingly still try to. Yeah. Um, but it, but it's like here comes one of those creatures. Come on now. Well, you, be, that, you know that what? bears the image of God Come in on. such a way that she bring, bring she up. can bring more human beings into the world. The most valuable, most glorious. Part of creation, the chief of creation. She brings those people mm. into the world. Let's stand, you know, mm-hmm. everybody stand up. You know, you, you don't just, you know, hey, <laughs> you know, like, that's right. No, like you like, you want to like stand up and that, salute, you know, like you want to, you want to bow down. That's right. Um, that, that's, you know, it's funny that's, but that's exactly what egalitarianism does. We see it in everything else, but that's what it's it done destroys to, it destroys the difference between yeah. the two. Yeah. Right. And, and we, oh, look, it's another, you know, generic human being. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, and that's the, you know, that's, I'm finding out the, e- I'm not so much worried about the egalitarianism that's in the world. I'm worried about the one that's in me. Yeah. Because when yeah. I, when you say standing up and respecting women that way, yeah. I was walking down the street the other day and I found myself on the opposite side of the street than my, my wife and my daughter. And it, it was quick, but I was like, I don't need, what What in the world? And I just flipped it real quick. Yeah, they didn't know what right. was going on. Yeah, right. But there was just something that was there. I was like, I don't ever want to be, right. that this is like, yeah. oh, common. Right. No, no, no. Right. You're beautiful. My, you're something different. My, you're wife, my wife, I mean, I was, it was one of those things early in our marriage where, where my wife had explained to me. And I'm like, oh, that's good. That's thank you, honey. But I was like, <laughs> but even when you're walking down the street, being next to the road. That's right. Like, why? That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Well, but, well, because I'm. Um, I'm the man. I, I take and, the hit, baby. And, and you know, if, if there's any danger, it, it's going to hit me first. Yeah, and, and and you're the kind of being that is more for what you do in creating humans. Yeah. you're extremely more needed than I am. Yeah, in one men, way. Are, men are kind of expendable. <laughs> well, yeah, in that I mean, regard. that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. George Gilder really walks yeah. through this right. in sexual suicide, and we've yeah. lost that reality. Right. And there's still a value, but men are there to protect that. We'll throw as many men as we have to to protect right. this being, right? Right. right? So that being said, men love your daughter so they don't talk like this. Even then, people live in fear of what might be next. Because Republicans in Congress are now calling for a nationwide abortion ban. Some even from the moment of conception. (laughs) The right of every woman in every state in this country to make decisions about her own body is on the line. And I've said it before and I will say it again. How dare they? How dare they? Oh, she just gave me another opportunity. Thank you, Kamala. When did she last say that? Huh? When did she last say that? 
How dare you? Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. But I, like, like, I, like, I, like I've said before, <laughs> how dare they? Look, I'm just thankful that she gave me the opportunity to play this clip. How dare you? <laughs> how dare you? Yes, yes. How dare you? Just the righteous indignation. Uh -huh. How dare you save the lives of little babies in the womb? How, how from, dare you? From conception. From, yeah, of all places. They want to stop. Wait, what? wait, wait. What? What? what what is that? So you know a speechwriter poured conception? over that. Conception. They did that intentional, right? They just pour over it. But again, this is look, there's one standard that says, hey, if you got your daughter on the pole, you failed as a father. <laughs> there's another standard that says, when you start to see egalitarianism slip inside of your home, this is where it goes. Hmm. Repent of it and kill it. Hmm. We kill it. Yeah. Otherwise, that's yeah. where you end up at. Yeah. But and I don't think people understand I mean, this is you know, back up again. It's like, th this doesn't come out of nowhere. That's right. Th this comes from generations. I mean, and it really goes back to like, we're talking about things like stand up when a woman enters the room. Yeah. Uh, honor your wife. Think highly of her. Talk to her as, as someone who bears the image of the living God. Talk to your daughter yeah. um, with, with reverence yeah. and, and as, a, as a glorious being. Yeah. Um, and, and then that that ripples out like you know raising a daughter honoring your wife in a in a in a home like that it, that's that's where uh, a woman grows up loving the calling of being a woman mm. loving the calling of being a mother and a wife and but but this doesn't happen overnight i mean how does she get into the point where she can say how dare you you know take away my right to murder a baby and 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 uh, and destroy my motherhood mm -hmm. um that comes from generations um, who uh, of men who did not honor that glory? That's right. And and in like day to day life. Yep, that's um, right. That's right. They 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 did they, they treated and just it. basic common no no ways. It, it, yeah. It's it, but the, it's it's that's like right. it's we are building something every day. Mm. We're building something every day. You're either building the kingdom. You're either building um a a world that that matches the world that God made by His Spirit by His grace. Um, by confession, by forgiveness, all, all of those things, or you're, you're building some kind of idolatrous shrine. Yeah, and I think the root is idolatry. Right. So if, if right. woman's the glory of man and man's the glory of Christ, and right. he's not worshiping Christ properly, right. which I right. would say is not really taking place throughout the land, the right. downstream fruit of that is, oh, right. and by the way, you're, right. the mother of all living, Eve, will be killing her children. Right. So, Molech. Yeah. You know? That's exactly where this next clip goes. We're going to go to clip six, guys. We're going to skip one, because one of the things that happens in this process when— Men don't love. This is really husband and wife thing, too, because you got to remember, Pastor, you hit on this. The joy that comes from your wife is the kind of thing that attracts the daughters to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, yeah. so then if you don't have a joyful wife, you have to take responsibility for that. Like, am I giving her sometimes what makes employees uh, or people who are working in the job I hate to do their job is that you don't give them tools that they need to do a great job because they love doing their job. It's not always because they hate their job. It's yeah. because you don't provide for yeah, them the right. things that they right. need to do their job joyfully. Right. And as men, we forget that about our wives so much. It's like, am I making sure that she has the resources that she needs to cultivate this garden that is my home yeah. so that the kind of plants that come out of here and trees and fruit plants, fruit trees that come out of here are the things that are juicy and happy. And, and you know, yeah. am I creating yeah. that kind of opportunity right. for my wife? And your daughter see that and, and say, say, I can't wait to be that. that that's what that's I want to be. That's what I want to be when I grow up. That's absolutely right. And, and uh, so, but then when you don't do that, you start ask, you start flipping on what freedom is and what opportunity is, and then it goes upside down. Right. Can we truly be free if a woman cannot make decisions about her own body? No. Can we truly be free if a doctor cannot care for her patients? No. Can we truly be free if families cannot make intimate decisions about the course of their own lives? No. And can we truly be free if so-called leaders claim to be, quote, I quote, on the vanguard of freedom while they dare to restrict the rights of the American people and attack the very foundations of freedom? You know, this clip brought me so much encouragement. Yeah. Because I realized that Kamala is not as stupid as she acts. Usually Kamala Harris is seen on Twitter or yeah. YouTube 
talking. Wait, wait, wait. So making, wait, wait, wait. What's encouraging about this well, clip? Because you know, it's encouraging that you know sometimes people will talk a certain way to make you like that person is very unintelligent. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. And when you see her talking out in public like she doesn't know how to string together a sentence or if she's just making a whole bunch of words so that you're like, what did she just say? That ain't her being stupid. She's playing you. Because I just saw her string together a very clear presentation of what it is she wants and how she yeah. wants it. What she thinks freedom and is. And what she thinks freedom is. Now, she's misguided. Yeah. Absolutely. But when I see her, she's playing games with us when she's like, and the thing we all need to worry about is buses. I love buses. Don't you love <laughs> buses? Because we can be in a bus and see space. You know, and space is nice because you can see it with your own eyes. I can't wait to see the telescope. I was like, oh, okay. I see what you're doing. You're playing me. So you're a distraction for something else that's really going on. She ain't talking like that here. She ain't uh, talk like that this that, whole is, speech. Isn't that just because she's got a good speechwriter? Yeah, is this, I think, isn't it just speechwriter? No, no. I think you're giving her too much credit. Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't, uh -huh. No, if you go back and watch old Kamala Harris clips yeah. before she was in this position, she's a distraction. That's what she's mm. there for. Yeah. She knows how. Remember, she's the one that said the problem with people who go to college is that they're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> right she's like they don't they have to be baby they have to be taken care of because they're not and all of a sudden you're like wait a second when did you become so articulate wait, wait. on the subject so, wait wait so but but what's so encouraging about this still i'm still it's, i'm still it's the, the the clip what she's saying that's not encouraging yeah that's part bad yeah that part really bad but it's saying something about her that yeah. when you see her out there playing this game they're fine playing this game to keep you confused about hey kamala's stupid look how stupid she is oh she can't make senses no they're playing a game on you she knows exactly. And I get their speech writers, but look, man, she just, she, when she talks about abortion, when she talks about equity, even off the cuff, they're very yeah. clear about it. Yeah. They're very clear about it. Like here's, here's a good, exa here's a good example. Um, um, oh, we were going to talk. I'll let you read the ad. I'll bring a clear example about what, why this makes so much sense. All right. Today's culture shifts like sand, but New St. Andrews College is established on Jesus Christ, the immovable rock. It is a premier institution that forges evangelical leaders who don't fear or hate the world. Guided by God's word, they take the world back because they're equipped with the genius of classical liberal arts and God-honoring wisdom, thanks to a faculty dedicated to academic rigor and to God's kingdom. Find out more today at nsa.com. EDU. One of the only colleges you need to be going to. So this is an example of what I mean, that she is, they know their target, they know what they're doing, and they know what's red bait for us. And here's, right now, everybody is jumping all over the Andy Stanley stuff. Yep. Right? Have you watched this? That's red meat. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. He knows which audience is going to jump. He knows he would get no attention unless he did this. And so he's using the other side to beacon off to everybody else, hey, look what I'm doing. And he's going to use this group to do it. Kamala does the same thing. They all play this political move. She knows how to speak. And here's a great example of what I mean. So there's a big difference between equality and equity. Equality suggests, oh, everyone should get the same amount. The problem with that, not everybody's starting out from the same place. So if we're all getting the same amount, but you started out back there and I started out over here, we could get the same amount, but you're still going to be that far back behind me. It's about giving people the resources and the support they need so that everyone can be on equal footing and then compete on equal footing. Equitable treatment means we all end up at the same place. Yeah. There's, there's, it's very, now she's, now this is, they made this video to this, but she's off the cuff sitting down in a barber chair. And she gets this like in 2021 and she's off the cusp talk, talking about this. She's a lawyer. She knows what she's doing. And, and we don't need to be so reflexive all the time that we just jump all over what they give us to jump on. You got to stop for a second and take a peek behind and say, why? Andy Stanley is selling a book. <laughs> right. There's a lot more going on. And we're like, ah, he's a hair. What wouldn't have you not known Andy Stanley to be wrong? He's been wrong for years. No. And we saw when he talked about unhitching mm -hmm. and he got us. to. And there's some things that we do need to jump on. But knowing that, hey, if we throw the jab, be ready for the hook. Right. And, and so, so, so but, but the whole point of bringing this up yeah. is that she's not as dumb as she looks. And they they play us to get us to. What are you going to say? Keith? Yeah, well, no, I was I just looking at between her comment on freedom, between this equity versus equality. 
and like, you know, whatever CRT stuff or like just critical theory stuff is like, it's a hum human emancipation project is what uh, I think was Horkheimer claimed it to be. And, and as I listen to these things and even just like it, the hard part, when you guys get into this in the, you know, the, the politics of creation, like all of this is anti-creation because right. the minute you Pure. have male and female, the minute you have covenantal succession, you're going to have winners and losers. And so the nature of covenantal faithfulness, you're going to have one outcome versus another. And history ends with some people going to hell. Some people go into heaven, and as long as that exists, that like it, it's all anti-Christian because history doesn't end with us all getting the exact same thing. Right. There's a difference, and so even everybody goes to heaven. There's different yeah. oh, rewards. Yeah, and, right. And then even and so I think what all this boils down to, like I just think it's a satanic desire to be God. Like yeah. I should have nothing Absolutely. outside of itself right. that imposes itself upon me, and so that's why I think even the whole abortion thing, this anti-female body, your body is a hindrance to yeah. you being totally free. Right. Whereas God's the only real free creature in the way that they want it, and they hate, they end up hating creation. Right. It, she is so the and so you're absolutely right. Thanks for connecting those two. But so just to finish answering your question, she is moving the door, the pen, the the Overton window or the pendulum the way she wants while you think she's being foolish. So we raise her up to talk about how foolish she is, brings her attention so that she can jab in this kind of stuff. And we don't always see that we're doing that. Yeah. And so instead of being able, we, we, we'll talk about her foolishness and don't really hit at the thing. Like even this, the, the, when we look at these kind of things, what we need to be reminding ourselves about at the end of the day, that equity and, and equality, those two things that are being used, that is Trinitarian heresy. Like these people are heretics political heretics that's going back to a theological reality because what they're seeing is that the ontological realities, if they're not the same, if they, they can't be ontological realities and economic realities. They're taking those two and saying, if you have a different economic reality, right. then you can't be of the same thing. Yeah. Right. And I was, what's that guy's name? Uh, Kim Bay X or whatever his name is. The, the anti-racist guy. Kim D X. Yeah. Ken, Ken, oh, Ken, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was reading his, and um, his basic definition of racism or, or like a racist policy is anything that gives us a different outcome. And right. so like, so like this idea that somehow any distinction between you and me or you and me is, is predicated upon a social construction of how people have organized reality. It can't be anything inherent. can't be covenantal. It's gotta be something what culture does. And so, in, in, a, in, a, in, yeah, in a wild sense, they're radically consistent. You know what I mean? Like they, right. they thought it through. They may have thought through they're, they're like a lot of people in the Christian faith are downstream from people who are doing the, the back work. But these people being downstream from people who have put in the work, like they're teasing it out. And, and I'll just say, you know, preaching on campus, they've won the day. You know what I mean? Intellectually, like I am a heretic to stand up on campus and make moral decisions or moral judgments between group A and group B. And that's basically kind of like the theology of it is the worst thing you can do is separate humanity. Like how wicked must you be that you don't want the all world to be one? That's why people melt down over Christian nationalism. Yeah. They're willing to but divide people up. This is, you know, we've been talking about rightly ordered loves, but this is why rightly ordered loves is impossible. Uh, it's so important is because you have to have, once you understand the Godhead, and that this is the kind of world that is a product of the Trinitarian love, then you see all the differences and the unity together. They're not as separate as everybody wants to make. This is a Trinitarian world. So then you can have distinctions and differences and not necessarily have to be separated. Pastor Toby's taller than I am. Doesn't make him more human than me, right? I'm better looking than you. <laughs> Keith, sorry. Uh, it might mean you're a little less. No, but, you know, but th because these are things that we look at and say, oh, isn't that great? Those he are beautiful. He does have more hair than us. <laughs> he does, he does. Yeah. Right, which might make him more human. Yeah. But, 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 but the way this is going is that those kind of differences are going to start making distinctions about what type of people we are. we even people mm -hmm. then? That's the question. Are you even people then if you don't have everything equal? And this is where the world economic, okay, this is my my conspiracy side coming into play. This is where I think the World Economic Forum under this type of leadership is really scary. When you have an egalitarian worldview that's being pushed, now we have a utopian nightmare where the World Economic Forum could suppress things that make us different. Do you think too smart? Oh, got to suppress that. Less for you. Do you not think enough? Let's boost that up. And they play, like you say, this guy where they can equalize everything. Well, there's no beauty in that. They remove all the faces because there's no distinction in the faces, no different noses, no different lips, mm -hmm. right? No different cultures. Like, wow, that's amazing. I remember when I went to Montana and was out there in Indian culture. You don't see Indian culture as prevalent as you would any other culture in America. It's, it's rare. Because it, you know, we put them in the reservation. That's right. That's No, Pastor, you, you're absolutely right. So you, when you go out to Red Lobster, when was the last time you Okay. Uh, <laughs> Those biscuits are pretty good. <laughs> I remember biscuits. I was in Montana and I was struck. I went out there and... I saw these beautiful gold people with this coal black hair. And I'm like, 
I've not seen humans like this before. Yeah, yeah. And it was striking. And I was taken back from it. I was like, God, thank you. They don't look like me. Right? I know what I look like. But that's that's beautiful. It's yeah. amazing. I can appreciate those things. The biblical name for that is glory. <laughs> Which men are supposed to be yeah, protecting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's, but that's, that's, those differences, is it's glory. That's right. And, and what... And what the egalitarianism and this and this secular humanistic religion, which is what it is, that wants to be God, play God, the only way they can pretend to be God is they have to simplify everything. Everything. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's got to be simplified into ones and zeros. It's got to be simplified into every you know monochrome. Yeah. Because they're not God. They suck at being God. They're no good at it. And and if and so only the infinite triune God can have an infinite. That's right. Um, you know, actual true. Um, this this um, this mul- uh, multiplicity of glories, yep. and yet hold it together in a unity. Right, yeah, and we as Christians, as we worship God, we have to think that through because it's not like there's without history. You know, some Europeans show up with the Enlightenment and be like, "Oh yeah, we're better than these savages," and right. so let's go ahead and you know chip them all mm. off, sort of thing. So there are things put them in that, reservations. Yeah, put them in reservations. Put them what off over shame. there. They, right. And so we, you do have people who are in the name of Jesus. They have done genuinely wicked yeah. things. Yes. And so as Christians, we should be able to call that out, repent, and move right. forward, and speak to these things of, yeah, how does God view the nations? You know right. I mean? How does God view the world? And He, we do have a revelation from him of what the world is like, and we need to radically submit ourselves to it and, right. and be free. Even right. we're, Like we were talking a little bit before the show, we're not just out here to be conservatives. You know what I mean? Like right. the hell with conservatism, if need be. We're yeah. out here to be biblical. And what does it look like for me to right. view men through the Bible? What does it look like to view white people, black people, whatever it is, yeah. through Scripture and right. submit radically to that? Freedom, freedom yeah. is not... Um, making the world into your own image. Freedom is submitting to the one who made this world mm-hmm. and in whose image we're made. Yeah. That, that's freedom is embracing the glory of the world that God's made and and um, and having it given back to you um, through the cross and resurrection of Jesus. Yeah, and so, freedom's not just being able to do whatever you want. Like to really love your neighbor. No, like how much more free? How much more free yeah. are you when you're able to actually love your neighbor rather than being you know gutted by oh I have the freedom to hate them or not? But right. the beauty of it is like wow I'm actually free to love this person. So right. biblical freedom is far more glorious uh, right. than and li- anything and, pagan man and offers life up. Giving mm-hmm. rather than life taking. Yeah, life nourishing. That's right. Rather than than violently cutting and castrating. And uh, chemically maiming. I mean, yeah. that, I mean that like that's what this ideology what are, yeah. is is giving us is here. Let us help. <laughs> it's, it's like mad scientists uh-huh. and, in and, here. And the subtle irony is like it's actually the eradication of diversity. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's Absolutely. like we, we actually actually yeah. we actually have to get rid of all it's of it. All and, monochrome ones and zeros. Yeah, and, it, right. and it's so funny. Even like when I'm on campus, they're always like, "Oh, you see the world way too black and white." Whereas I'm like, "It's HD, baby." You know what I mean? <laughs> the whole thing is bright. Yeah. You're the ones who want it gray. Yeah. What a miserable place to be. Right. Is right. this? Oh, just they don't even junk. want it. Great. Yeah. yeah. That takes too much no. color. Black and white. It's just pure just blackness. Yeah. yeah. It is a hell. There's a, and so you have so so you have two ditches. You have one where fathers need to be protecting your daughters and be a good husband to your wife and, and provide for them and guard that beauty. But you also need to be protecting your sons, otherwise you get this. I suppose it will still be an issue because are we going to codify it? Are there going to be some states that outlaw it altogether? Are we, to, are we going to start seeing busloads of young, poor black women from Alabama going to California for abortions where they get an abortion and a cookie from Gavin Newsom? I suspect over time the optics of that are not going to look that good. Uh, but I would also say that it's, it's very unfortunate that abortion is such a big issue for everybody because... It's, it's a personal and private decision, obviously, for the most part. And then there's the issue of where the state has to protect life. But also there's so many, I don't want to say more important things, but there are so many functions that the government really should be focused on all the time, like, you know, keeping you safe and the border and police and things of that nature and making sure the economy is chugging along, that abortion just becomes one of these culture war things that envelopes the whole thing and, and it's messy. What's going on with everybody's hairline? <laughs> His has changed, the Greta Van... The uh, how dare you? Hers yeah. has changed. Like everything's just kind of. I don't back. know if that's the most important. Thing <laughs> sorry about, about that. Sorry, sorry but, about that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> so ahead, that that's, that's, that's why he brought it up. That's why he brought it up. He's like, don't let your. Don't, Dad, you have one job. Yeah, you have one, one job. job. Don't let your boys have that <laughs> kind of hairline. But, 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 but this is a failure. You had this as a dad failure too. What's the dad yeah. failure? Your sons will grow up a gay and won't protect women. Yeah, or think that it's that important. Yeah. I mean, I I, I couldn't. I guess there is that protect the life thing. Um, Uh Yeah. (laughs) Well, I couldn't. You know, this isn't. Doesn't the government have more important things? If someone doesn't understand a person made in the image of God, 
and doesn't understand what they're for. Right. You're going to have this kind of collapse. But that all comes from fathers being able right. to instill right. that. Yeah. When you don't love your sons, this is right. how they grow up. And right. even the, and, like, and they don't protect women. Right. And it's not funny, but even the mild humor of he's like, oh, I'm a classical liberal, like, uh, right? Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. He's like, ah, eh, the whole life thing. You know what I mean? Like, right. like classical right. liberals now right. who are like, oh, yeah, this but, is a one role of government. Yeah, there's I, a I was out. hoping you were going to show me someone other than Kamala today. Well, here you go. I know, but this is this a, is not. No. Okay, I got to keep those two. No, no that, away that was from that me. was Kamala. <laughs> that was Kamala. Oh, more Kamala. Oh, yeah. wow. Just go to the Daily Wire for some more Kamala. Kamala. <laughs> if you're sick of getting married, if you're married, have you some kids, and if you have kids, go baptize them. Until tomorrow, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. This is Cross Politics. Go love your family, dads. Mom always told me to be a good boy, but the world said I could be anything I wanted to be, which is great, because I want to be a problem. No, I won't dive into sex, drugs, or gender confusion. To the world, that would make me a good little boy. I will learn formal logic and adhere firmly to the concept of objective truth. I will commit myself absolutely to the authority of the Word of God and make friends with Augustine, Luther, Calvin, Chesterton, Lewis, and the U.S. Constitution. I hope to grow up and love only one woman, a woman at least as clear-thinking and rebellious in this world as I will be, who knows where true beauty lies and who will never let me stop striving to be the biggest problem I can be. I will give my life for hers and aim to have a family large enough to require specialty automobiles. We will worship in a church, unashamed of the gospel, and live in a community of families doing the same. I will work myself to the bone, providing for my family, and I will make sure my kids all fall in love with Narnia and Middle Earth, that they will all know how to think, that evolution will make them giggle, <laughs> and rainbows will make them think of Noah and his archiarchy. Like I said, I will be a problem, immune to all that is hip and trendy and now. Singing songs that are centuries old, savoring good wine and great whiskey, dancing and laughing and feasting while the enemies of God scowl and glower in shelter and place. Hey little boy, the world says, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a metastasizing cancer of conservative Christian culture, devouring Marx's impotent progressive dream and building a resurrected western world. I want to be a stomper of stupid sandcastles, an exposer of poisonous lies, I want my life to be a monument to the triune creator God who made us all. The kind of monument you and yours will never be able to tear down. Oh, and a farmer. Thanks for asking. New St. Andrews College. Liberal Arts for Outlaws. Hi, I'm Robert Borton, CEO of Classical Conversations, the world's largest classical Christian homeschooling community. I'm launching a new podcast, Refining Rhetoric. If you like cross politics or just listen to hear what crazy stuff they're saying today, you will enjoy Refining Rhetoric. You can find us on your favorite podcast platform. I practice the 15 tools of learning by interviewing great guests, looking at current events, and talking about cryptocurrency.